Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our virtual Mishnah Rosh here. We're holding Mishnah Chalik Beis, and we will be learning today. Mir Hashem Daf Mem Tes Amid Beis. First, we have some unfinished business here on Mem Tes Amid Aleph. We are continuing to learn Hilchas Tatilas Yadayim. We pick up today Simon Kuf Dun Tes in middle of Sif Gimel. Now we read the entire Mechaber of the Sif Gimel inside already. We already did Mishtabura Ice Cut and Yud Beis and Yud Gimel, and we are up to Mishtabura Ice Cut and Yud Dalit. So, just to remind ourselves what we were speaking about over here in Sif Gimel, the Mechaber told us right away in the beginning of Sif Gimel that the Kali that we use for the Tils Yadayim, actually we learned this already in Sif Aleph, the Kali that we need for the Tils Yadayim has to be Machsik or Revius. It has to be a keli that could hold a revius. Here in Sif Gimel, the Mechaber introduced us to a keli that could hold a revius if you support the keli. So it's a keli that's not able to stand on its own. So it has a clay kibel, it has inside space to hold the volume of a revius of liquid, but you can't put it down on the surface. If you try to put it down, if you let go of it, it's going to topple. So it's a keli that needs to be supported. In that case, says the Mechaber, this is not a keli. It's not considered a keli, even though it could hold a revius of mayim. It has a clay kibel. It could hold a revius of mayim, but that is not considered a keli, and therefore you cannot use it for netilas yodayim. Says the Mishnah, we're a nice cut in yodalad. Ainoi keli. Such a keli is not considered a keli. Explains the Mishnah, we're Vahainu kishaloi hoisa tchilas tikunoi kach. However, we have to remember, and we're going to learn about this a little bit later on, we have to remember that that's when we're speaking about a keli that was not made from its beginning to be used that way. And we're going to explain what this means. Says the Chavetz Chaim, Because if this keli was made to be used in that fashion, keli then we're going to see that it is considered a keli. We're going to see that in Sif Hay. Later on in Sif Hay, the Mechaber is going to tell us, I'm going to read to you the very beginning of Sif Hay in the Mechaber, I'm Tesam and Beis. The Mechaber is going to say, A keli that was made from its inception, from its creation, it was made to be used this way, it's a keli that cannot be used without being supported. And we only use it when it's being supported. That is called a keli. So we have the concept of a keli that cannot stand on its own, and yet it is considered a keli. Now we're going to have to see if what I'm going to say right now holds true as we go further but from what i've seen so far i think it does i mentioned yesterday a type of keli that i remember from back when i was a child where you had a plastic um i don't know what to call it other than a holder you had a plastic holder so this was a a piece of plastic that had a handle and it had an opening on top and you would take these paper inserts and you would put in a paper insert and snap it in and now you have a cup that you could fill up and you could drink. And when you're finished, you snap out the paper insert and you throw it in the garbage. So it has a disposable insert. Now that disposable insert had a pointy bottom. So that disposable insert is a keli that is made to be used. It's zikr made to be used to hold liquids. It's a drinking cup. So it's trinas tikunoi lekach. It was made from the beginning to hold liquid and to be used through external support. So that's what we're talking about over here. Now let's, I don't want to confuse the issue. So let's take away the question right now of disposable Kalim. That's just the, the idea that came into my mind. But let's say it's not a disposable Kalim. Let's say you have a holder and this holder is meant to hold even a glass insert. And let's say the glass insert is pointy at the bottom. But this glass insert is made to be used as a cup. It's made to be used as a keli that can be machsik revius. But it's made to be used with external support. So based on the halacha 
that we're going to see later on in Sif Hay, we're going to see that the Bechaber holds that that is a keli that's usable for the Tilas Yadayim. And that's why over here in Sif Gimel, the Chavetz Chaim has to go out of his way to tell you that when the Mechaber says that a keli that can't support itself is not considered a keli, he's telling you, yes, that's when we're talking about something that was not made to be used that way. So, for example, like the Mechaber says in Siv Gimel, if you have the Magufa of a Chavis, if you have the stopper of a barrel that is pointy so it can't stand on its own, and you went ahead and you hollowed out the top of the magufa so that you could pour a revius of liquid into it, that is not something that's tchilas tikunai lakach. That was not made to hold a revius of mayim at all. It was made to be the magufa of a chavis. You want to go ahead and, and fashion a, 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 a drinking cup out of it, so you went ahead and you hollowed out the top. But this is not tchilas trikuno lekach. And even if you went ahead and you hollowed out the top, it's not a keli because it can't stand on its own. So this is what the mechaber is telling me over here. So again, let's take a look inside. When when the mechaber says einoi keli, says the mishtabrura vahainu kishaloi hoisa tchilas tikuno lekach. That's when it wasn't made that way from its creation. Because if it was made to be used that way, then it is considered a keli. What we're talking about over here is What we're talking about over here, when we say that a keli is not considered a keli if it needs exterior support if it can't stand on its own he says let's say we have a keli where the bottom let's say you have a drinking cup and the bottom of the drinking cup became damaged and now so imagine you have let's say a metal cup and one side of the bottom of the cup became badly dented and now it can't stand it's smashed on one side so it can't stand it's not a keli. Oi, or, show you keli ke'en magufa. Or we're talking about a keli like, like the magufa of the chavis. The afim nasa betchilakach, even though you'll tell me what do you mean, the magufa was created with a pointy bottom. So maybe it is tchilas tikun and kalkach. Yeah, but, but the magufa was not made to hold liquid. When, when the mechaber says it's if hey, that a keli that was made that way from the beginning is a keli, what he means is a keli that was made to be used as a keli to hold mashkin and to be used with external support, that is a keli. But a magufish chavis, yes, it was made from its creation with a pointy bottom, but it was never intended to hold mashkin. You went ahead and you hollowed up the top, so you should make a drinking cup out of it. But that's not considered a keli. Ice contest vav, magufa, the stopper of the barrel. Or the covers of other types of containers, Shehem Chodin, if they're pointy, the Ein Mikablin Revius, and they cannot hold a Revius of liquid, Shaloy Al Yede Smicha, unless you support them. Also, oh, you can't use them for the Tilos Yadayim, Eli Imkain Tiknon, unless you fashion them so that they should be able to stand on their own. Aval Imhoyu Rechavim Mitchila. But let's say you have the lid of a keli or the lid of a pot and it's flat and wide at the bottom so it could stand on its own. And it could hold a revius of liquid. That's kosher to be used for the tils yadayim. Why? You use the lid of a pot sometimes to hold liquid. So if it could hold liquid and it could stand on its own, it's not a keli. However, the Chavetz Chaim does bring down that there are those that, that are machmir. There are those that are machmir and say that the lid of a container or the lid of a pot, unless you specifically designated it for use to hold liquids on its own, you can't use it for the Tils Yadayim, even though it could be machzik or revius and even though it could stand on its own. This was the Mechaber speaking about the Megufa of the Chavis. It's pointy at the bottom. That's what Chada means. It's sharp. It's pointy at the bottom. The side that's meant to push into the barrel is pointy. 
but up at the wide part at the top, yesh b'chalal lekabel. You went ahead and you hollowed out space so that it could be b'kabel mashkin. It could hold liquids and it could be machzik revis. Eyes cut in your zayin. The mechaber said, "Ain noitlin, hey mena. You can't ain noitlin me mena. You can't use this for the tils yadai." And again, points out the mishnebura. Va'afti he nasis b'tchila chada, even though. From its creation, this magufa was made pointy. So you might be tempted to say, what do you mean? This is tchilas, um, what are the words? Tchilas tikunoi kach. This is the way it was made originally, says the Chavetz Chaim. No. Mikam okam, nevertheless, loy nechsheve kikli, it's not considered a keli, she tchilas tikunoi kach, amavur b'sifhei de mutter. This is not the keli of sifhei. That's tchilas tikuna kach, and therefore is mutter for the tils yadayim. Why? Mishum shalonas is betchila bishvila kabel mamashkin, because this was never intended to hold liquids. It's a stopper. It was never intended to be used as a container for liquids or as a cup. Rak ikara likisayhu. It's made to be a stopper, a cover. V'chein loy dami l'sak v'kupa. Nor is it similar to a sack or a box. Hamavur b'siv dalid. The Machmir and Sham Deloy Mahani Afib Tikton Lochevis Beloy Smicha. The Chavetz Chaim is being careful to tell us in both directions. Again, I want to make sure that this is very, very clear. The case of the Mechaber over here in Siv Gimel is you have the stopper of a barrel. The stopper of a barrel, let's say it's made out of wood or it's made out of cork. Cork is a type of wood. It's pointy at the bottom. The side that goes into the barrel is pointy and it gets wider as it tapers as it goes up. Right, so that it should seal the barrel, so that it, it should get stuck in. Now you went ahead and you hollowed out the wide part, the top, so it could hold the revius of Mayim. Says the Mechaber, you cannot use that for the Tils Yadayim. Why? Because it's not considered a Kli. Why is it considered a Kli? Because it can't stand. Okay, says the Mishnabur, now we have to balance this case against other cases that we're going to see weiter in Sibikov Duntes. So on the one hand, we're going to have a, a halacha later on in Kuf Duntes where we're makel and we say you can use for the Tilis Yadayim a keli that cannot stand on its own. What keli is that? If it's tchilas tikunoi kach, if you have a keli that was originally fashioned to hold a revius of Mayim and to be used with external support, that's okay for the Tilis Yadayim. The example that I'm giving for that is, let's say you have a glass that's pointy at the bottom and it's hollow inside and it can hold a revius of Mayim and it's meant to be used as a drinking cup, but it has a metal holder that you drop it into when you want to use it to drink it. So this is a keli, shetchilas tikunoi kach. This keli was originally fashioned to hold a revius of Mayim and to be used with external support. That, Kaylee, you're allowed to use for the Tilis Yadayim. Now, you want to ask me a question. Hold it. You're telling me that that's okay because it's Tchilas Tikunai Kach. How about the cork? The cork is also Tchilas Tikunai Kach. What do you mean? From its very creation, from the time that it was made, it was made with a pointy bottom. Yes, it was made with a pointy bottom, but it wasn't made to hold liquids. So it's not a cup that was fashioned to be used with external support, it's a stopper. You went ahead, you fashioned out a hollow in it so they could use it as a drinking cup. So no, this is, does not fit into the kula of Sifhe. The kula of Sifhe, of Tchilas Tikunai Kach, does not apply to the Magufa of Achavis. Then we have another case later on in Sivikov Dodes. We have the, say, the case of a sack and a kupa. Over there, we're very, very machmer. What's the case of a sack or a kupa? You have a sack. You have a sack that is not intended to hold liquid at all. Not only is it not intended to hold liquid, it can't hold liquid. It's a fabric sack. If you pour liquid into it, the liquid will all, um, will all leak right out. Now, what did you do? You went ahead, you took the sack, and you go ahead and you line the sack with pitch. I'm looking for the Mechaber over here. One second. Mm. Where is it? Oh, it's back here. Okay. 
Yeah. So you took a sack or you took some kind of a box, maybe a wicker basket that can't hold liquid, and you lined it with pitch. You lined it with tar. So now it could hold beverages. And you also, you somehow firmed up the bottom of this bag, of this sack, so it could stand on its own. Over there, the Mechaber is going to say, even though you went ahead and you fashioned a, a keli and you made it into something that could hold liquid and could stand on its own, over there you cannot use that to, for the Tils Yadayim. Why? Because that was never intended to hold liquid at all. So the Mishnah over here says like this. He says, the Magufa of the Chavis is not like the Kula of Sifhei, of the Keli that's Trinas, that's Trilas Tikuna Lekach. It's also not like the Chumra of the Sak and the Kupa. By the Sak and the Kupa, even if you go ahead and you line it with tar and you make a flat bottom so that it could stand on its own, you still can't use it for the Dils Yadayim. But by the Magufa Shal Chavis, if you would cut off the pointy part and make it flat and you would hollow out the top so that you could use it to hold water, then you could use it for the Dils Yadayim. So the Chumra of the Sak and the Kupa also doesn't apply to the Magufa of the Chavis. Why? So the Mishnah word says like this. Um, the chain, three lines off the bottom, and Tesla and Alpha in the Mishnah Bura. The chain loy dummy lesak the kupa. Not only does the cool of Sifei not apply to Magufa Shachavis, but the extra chumra of Sak and Kupa, where you can't use that for the Tils Yadayim even if you make it hold water and you make it be able to stand on its own, that also doesn't apply to the Magufish Lachavis. And the Magufish Lachavis you can use for the Tils Yadayim if you make it be able to stand on its own and hold liquid. Why? Explains the Mishnah the Machmir and Sham by the Saka the Kupa were very Machmir, the Loi Mahani Af Im Tikton Loshevis Smicha. Over there, we're machmer, and you can't use it for the tils yadayim, even if you make a flat bottom so that it can stand on its own. Misham dabazel kol panim mishtam shebala pa'amim lekabalas mashkin, because the mishnah says it was not unheard of to use the magufa of a chavis to fashion a drinking cup out of it. So okay, that we could do, but to take a shopping bag and use it to line it with pitch and make a flat bottom and make a drinking cup out of it. That's unheard of. So that has an extra chumra that we're going to see that you can't turn that into a keli for the tils yadayim no matter what. Okay. Now we move along to Sif Dalad where we're going to see these halachas. Says the Mechabrit Sif Dalad. Chemes u kefisha. A chemes is a leather flask. So we've all seen pictures of that. We learn about it in the Gemara. You have a leather flask that's made as a canteen. It's made to hold wine, it's made to hold water, but it's made to hold li- liquids and to drink from. Now, a leather flask doesn't have a mock of You can't put it down, it doesn't stand on its own. Chemes u kefisha. A kefisha was also some kind of a leather uh, container that they used to put olives in. They would pick olives and then they would fill up this leather container with olives and let them sit. Now, what would happen is the olives generate warmth, especially when they're all together. And that makes the olives soften up, and that makes them ready for pressing to press out the oil. So the chemes and the kefisha, shehem mine noidois shel oyer, these are both types of leather flasks, shetiknon, where you kind of, um, you prepared them, Somehow, you made a bottom out of them so that they could stand on their own. That you could use for the Tils Yadayim. It's a flask that is made to hold liquid. So it is a keli that's made to be machzik mashkin. It's made to hold liquids. And now you made a base moishav. Now you made, somehow you fashioned base so that it could stand on its own. So now it meets all the criteria of the Tils Yadayim, and you could use it for the Tils Yadayim. 
aval sack the kupa, but a sack, a fabric sack, or a kupa, some kind of a basket, maybe a wicker basket. Shehiskin on Losheves Poloy Smicha, where you fixed them so that they could stand without external support. Vizifton Bizefes, and you lined them with pitch, you smeared them with pitch, which is like tar. Achehe Mikabla Mashkim until they could take a contain liquids, a neutlin mehem. Those you cannot use for the tils yadayim. A neutlin lo yadayim. Turning to mem tesam and base. Why? Levisha ena masuyim likaba mashkim. Because they were never intended to be holding liquids. Vuhu adin in the same halacha would apply likaivayim shel levadim. With felt hats. Pirish, beget kosha. Levadim is a type of firm... Um, Fabric, it's a felt. That's what it is. Filter has It's felt. Avul kishem kashim kol kachshem kablem mayim veinam zovim mayhem. But these hats are caps. If they're hard to the extent that they mamish hold water and it doesn't flow out, mikamakaim einam as. Oh no, no, no. I read this wrong. Vahu adin lekayvar mishel levadim. Even felt hats and felt kapalach. Pirish beged kasha filter has even if they're so stiff and so hard, where they could hold water, and they don't fall apart, and the water doesn't flow out, they're not made to hold liquids, and therefore they're not usable for the tils yadayim. Nevertheless, says the Bechaber, mutarim, if it's a really pressing circumstance, you have no other kalim, you could use these felt hats. Because travelers who have no access to any other kind of cup, they will take their cap and use it to drink water from. Says the Mishnah back on Memtes and Aleph, bottom line, Oiskot Yudches, Shetiknon Ve'osa. So this was the opening halacha of Sif Dalid, which was you took some kind of a leather flask, so the leather flask is intended, and it was fashioned to hold liquid. The problem is that it can't stand on its own. And that's why it's not usable as a keli for the tilis yadayim. But if somehow you fashioned a mokam moishav, if somehow you made a base for it so that it could stand on its own, then you can use it for the tilis yadayim. Says the Mishnah Rais Kotn Yuchesh, Shetiknon Va'asa, Ritzon Eloimah, what the Machabah means to say is, Shetiknon you repaired them by making a makamosha for them so they could stand. The Taz asks on this, I don't understand. Why don't we compare the leather flask to the pointy drinking cup that we spoke about earlier? Earlier I told you that the halak is going to come out in Sifhei, that if you have this pointy glass drinking glass that's made to put into a holder and be externally supported, you could use that for the Tilos Yadayim. Why? Because it's made to hold mashkim and trilas tikunoi kahi. It was made from its creation to be used to hold beverages with the pointy bottom. And therefore it's usable for the Tilos Yadayim. So ask the Taz, I don't understand, the leather flask is the same way. The leather flask is also a keli that's made to hold mayim and tchilas tikunoi kach that it doesn't have a base to stand on. So why isn't that the same halacha? Why is it that the leather flask, we have to make a base? And if we don't make a base and we don't make it be able to stand on its own, it can't be used. Why? What's the difference between these two cases? So the hikshataz, I don't understand. The leather flasks, asuyin lekabo mashkin, they're made to hold liquids, and they're made to have bottoms that can't stand on their own. So why do you have to make it be able to stand on its own in order to use it for the Tilsi Yadayim? The dummy likeli shetchilas tikuna kachim sifei. This sounds like the kula of sifei of tchilas tikuna kachi. It's made to be used to hold mashkim with a pointy bottom. Velamitzar tikun. So why does it need to be repaired? The T rates and the Taz answers. The Einoi Choshev Base Kibble, this is very cute. The Einoi Choshev Base Kibble Shalohen, the inside of the flask, the base Kibble, the part of the flask that 
is open to be able to hold liquid is not considered a valid base kibble below Tikkun Moshev without doing something to the flask to allow it to stand on its own. Why? And let me explain it to you outside. Again, let's go to the two cases that I keep on using. The case that we have a cooler in Sif A, that's the case of the glass with a pointy bottom. So the cooler of Sif A is, even though this glass is a pointy bottom and it can't stand on its own, and it's only meant to be used with an external support, there's a holder that you put it into, still you can use it for the tils yadayim, even without the holder. Why? Because it's trilas tikkun oikachi. That's the way it's made to be used. It's made to be a glass that can be maxic revius. It's made to be a glass that can hold liquids, even though it has a pointy bottom. And it's used with the pointy bottom. Okay, frek the taz, I don't understand. A leather flask is the same way. A leather flask is a keli that's made to hold liquids, even though it has, so to speak, a pointy bottom. It can't stand on its own. Yet the Mechaber says that in the case of the leather flask, in order to use it for the tils yadayim, you have to do something to it to make the bottom flat so it can stand on its own. And somehow you have to make it rigid. Why? What's the difference between that and the glass? The Mishavu is going to say the answer is very simple. The glass with the pointy bottom always has a base kibel, an interior, that could hold a revius of mayim. If the glass is a six ounce glass with a pointy bottom, then even if you take it out of its holder, it's still a six ounce glass. But how about a leather flask? What happens to a le leather flask when you take out all the liquid? It falls flat. Guess what? It's like a balloon. If you take out all the liquid out of the leather flask, it now lies flat, it'll fall on the floor, it'll fall flat, and now there's no base key belt. Now it doesn't have any interior space. The two sides of the flask collapse in on each other. So the only way it's considered a Kaylee that has a base key belt that could be Masik Revius is if you do something to the bottom to allow it to stand upright and maintain its interior opening, maintain the interior space. Otherwise, it's not considered a Kaylee at all. Let's see it inside. The T rates, the Taz answers, the Ainoi Choshev base kibel shalahen. The base kibel of the leather flask is not considered a base kibel. Beloy tikkun moishav. Unless you do something to allow it to stand. Sheki she'ain behen mayim, because when there's no water in the leather flask, ain behen cholol. It's not going to have an interior space. Elamunach zealzeh. Rather, the two sides of the flask will collapse in on each other and it won't have any internal space. Ice cotton, your test, lefisha enam asuyim. The sock and the kupa, the, the, the fabric sack and the wicker basket we can't use, even if you line it with pitch and you make a base moishav. Because they were not fashioned as beverage holders. Felt caps. A kapalush, a cap. Or a yarmulke. Or even a leather yarmulke which is stiff, and it could hold liquid. You can't use it until you die, because it was never intended for that. But under pressing circumstances, you could use them. Says the Mishnah what does that mean? First of all, they have to be hard and stiff, so that they hold their shape with the liquid in them, and the liquid doesn't just right away, you know, f uh, flow out. If you would take my velvet yarmulke, you try to put water in it, it'll just collapse and all the water will flow out. So the felt yarmulke or the leather yarmulke has to be stiff enough that it can retain its shape and the water won't just flow out. Vedan, you should know, says the Chavetz Chaim, the Rashal is Chaylik on this, Usvir Lay, and he, and he holds the Koyva Lay Nasa Le Kabbalah Klal, that a cap was never intended to hold liquid. And it's no better than a fabric sack or a wicker basket. Because of a chayodam, the chayodam writes, the Mishas Tchak Godel, in a very pressing circumstance, Kigon Baderach, like somebody who's traveling on the road, and he doesn't have any other keli to use, Yitol, he could use that to wash the Tilos Yadayim, or believe Bracha, albeit without a Bracha. Because of the Oz Yikra Chayodam Amape, and he says that in that case, a person should wrap his hands in a cloth when he eats. 
אבל שלא יהיה בשעת שכה גודל, אבל אם זה לא מאוד פרסינג סרקמסטנס, יש לה אחמר, יש שם מאחמר לא להשתמש בקאפ. זה גם לא יביא דרכים בזמננו, אין שייס את מאלה, because in our days, says the Chai Yodam, even travelers do not drink from their caps. V'chein kosav ha'pri b'gadim, t'lo yavarak on the t'il azu, and the pri b'gadim agrees that we should not make a bracha on such a t'il azu yadayim. We're going to break here, and we're going to continue next time. Yitzhak Hashem with Tzif Hey. Thank you so much for joining me for Liban HaTorah. This is Liban HaTorah. Shem Yimei and Agans Klai Yisrael, the Rosh Hashem Shitzen, Yeshua Sifur, as Parnas and Shadduchim, to all those in need. And we should be zayichet to see the B.S. Gerald Tzedek. Be well.